All right, guys, we're here today with our buddy from Small Town Exotics. Welcome. Yeah, this is Shane. And uh, do you say Kelly or Killy? Kelly. <laughs> we're, all, we're always <laughs> pronouncing things wrong, and so we're like, is it, uh, yeah, this is Kelly, right? It should be Kelly. Shane Kelly, real easy name. Shane <laughs> Kelly, yeah, easy name. All right, my, my wife's name's easier. Her first name's Kelly as well, so she's Kelly Kelly. Kelly Kelly. Oh, that's pretty funny. Actually. That's pretty. Like that's it. pretty funny. Was she like, I when you guys got married? Was she like, no, I want to, I want to hyphenate my name. I don't want to. Uh, she she thought about it and then she wanted me to take her last name, but I was like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so already the intro is going off the rails, but we're yeah. we're here with small town exotics. Um, yeah. We're gonna take a. Uh, a virtual tour of his collection. Yes, yeah, so that's we'll going to be, be awesome. Yeah, and uh, we're we're going to ask him a few questions and you know pick his brain on a couple of things, and then we're going to show you his collection. So uh, why don't we just get started? I think um, I'm wearing uh, Brandon's shirt. I just want everybody to see more of a different color, just showing it off. Um, <laughs> me and him have been talking a lot lately. <laughs> um, so anyway. So we want to know what got you back into to snakes because I know you were out of it for a while and then you uh, got back in. Uh, I was on a job where I was uh, working out of town Monday through Friday, and I was in. I I took a job here local so I could be home every night. And when I did that, I just happened to be browsing around. I seen a genetic stripe online, and I was like, "Hey, I'm going to be home again to take care of things." So. Let's just go ahead and get that genetic stripe, you know, because I've been out. I hadn't had a reptile in like 15 years or so. So like wow. the last time I had anything, you know, like pides and genetic stripes, they were pretty pricey back then. So, yeah, so I got a genetic stripe and now the rest is history. That's yeah. cool. That's pretty fun. 15 years is a long break. Yeah, yeah, a lot has changed in 15 years, I'm sure. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. There's a lot changed. Yeah. Pides aren't twenty thousand dollars anymore. Yeah. <laughs> when you picked that up, you were just looking to get a pet. Yeah, I have like uh, aspirations uh, of becoming a business. Well, I I just got it as a pet at first, and then I uh, I thought about breeding it because I never did get to breed before. I just had like my collection before was like one of a bunch of different kinds of things, like a berm, a boa, right. bearded dragon, you know, just so I never could breed before. So I thought, well, I'll get a male. For the genetic stripe, which I do have a, I have a banana, a pastel banana genetic stripe male, and I, I thought, well, I'll get a, get a pair and uh, breed them, and then now you see everything behind me, it, it just kept going. Oh, uh, we understand that definitely. The addiction yeah. grew from there, huh? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, and I'm I'm gonna give a little spoiler for the your collection tour, but so you're dealing with and working with sunsets. So yes. where do you see that project going? Like, um, what do you think the, the next really cool sunset uh, combination will be? Because I, I have some ideas, and I know Ryan has some ideas too. So what do you think? Me, personally, I'm going to see how it reacts with Pied. I, I really like Pied, too. I have a Pied project going and stuff, too. But uh, I, know, I know there's people working with the, the Pied sunset cross mm -hmm. there. So I, I'd like to see how that ends up. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Yeah, what do you think, Ryan? Uh, I think uh, Desert Ghost is one of the ways to go with it for sure. I want to see if we can hold that orange red coloration as long as possible. Yeah. You know what I mean? So Desert Ghost will tend to keep that bright. And if you did Desert Ghost Pied Sunset, holy cow! Like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, and see, I'm on the like. I I liked the Enchi um, sunsets. And I'm like, oh, how could you set that up to the next level? You know, I think it would probably be a, a screamer would be like a sunset lavender albino and with Enchi. So you start getting into that, uh, that um, Enchi and leopard, Enchi and leopard sunset stuff or like starburst sunsets. Yeah. And I don't know if you're uh, allowed to say starburst, but <laughs> 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 we're not. Uh, but yeah, I mean, if you just were blowing out um, lavender albino and leopard, in with Enchi and Sunset, I think you just I don't yeah. know. interesting. 
<laughs> yeah, I, I've had thoughts of like throwing Sunset into the OD, YB, NC, Gene X combos and stuff too. I mean, yeah. I, I'm all set up where I can go any direction except Desert Ghost. I don't have any Desert Ghost, but I can go any direction with it that I, that I want in the future. So, oh, okay. that's great. Yeah, I saw. Um, everybody's gonna see what uh, what you got, but I, I think that's a fun project. And what do you think about like people talk about the um, how they look as babies compared to how they are as adults. And anybody that breeds sunsets usually are like, you got to sell the babies because when they become adults, you know, they kind of brown out a bit. Uh, what do you think about all that? I think it's just a matter of finding the right combos to get them to hold their color. You know, I like that DG idea too. You know, that, that would be really good. Or even like white lace, like white lace. Yeah. We're, sets. we're digging into the, the lace project. Yeah. I know you guys are in on that, man. I, I want to get in on that too eventually. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many that we all want. Yeah, yeah. And the Mario thing that you guys got. I mean, yeah. There's there's a bunch of different ways. Absolutely. For sure. Yeah, I, I disagree with those people that poo poo the adult sunsets. Like they're a beautiful animal in and of themselves. Like they're rusty brown. I mean, I think that they're cool looking. Yeah. But I mean they're not as stunning as a baby. Everything no, there is a baby usually. So uh, um, I think just the sunset pied would be good too because I think that rusty color as an adult next to the stark white of a pied would go f phenomenal. But uh, yeah. you know, I I also think that uh, sunset such a drastic overpowering pattern changer too. I mean, it it could do something totally crazy like make like the pied sided looking snakes how they do in other species. You know, like the retics and the corn snakes have those pied sided. Yeah. Yeah, and the worms and yeah, so that's cool. Yeah, yeah that's a good idea. I, I'm I'm interested in seeing where that goes for sure. Yeah, yeah. I, I know Joel. I know Joel's working the the double head angle right now with the pied sunset. So I'm I'm interested in seeing how that turns out. Yeah, we definitely know a few people that are working with him, and uh, not that I'm going to mention Bob Vu, but I will. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's working with it, some sunset stuff going on. He's always got crazy stuff cooking. Hey, but you never know. It could just be an all-white snake, like how the the spider pied, or you never know. You know, yeah, absolutely. Right, right. Um, all right, and uh, one more question before we take that tour. So, if you can change one thing uh, about getting back into the game uh, since you started, what would it be? I would say I would have done a little bit more research before I started collecting. Uh, I did. I was going off a philosophy of getting some base gene females and just getting a powerhouse male. And mm -hmm. I, cha I changed that approach uh, a little bit into my collection. So I do have some females here that aren't quite aligned with my plans as they are right now. But I mean, that would probably be my, my biggest thing I would change right there. Okay. Um, I know that, you know, a lot of people, especially Billy kind of influenced that a lot as well saying um, from mutation creation saying you should really put money into to a monster uh, female and grow her up. Even and Justin Cabelka. Yeah, really. Justin says that too. Yeah. Having house female is like, you know, it's great having that male, but down the road, two years down the road, when you have those adult females that are, are the same quality, like, man, it's a game changer for sure. Yeah. Um, so I know a lot of people talk about that and uh, you know, you're like, yeah, you know, like I wish I would have done that sooner. But how long were you back in the game so far? Oh, I'm, I'm still under a year, so. Yeah, exactly. I'm good. I'm good. Don't exactly. be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, 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 didn't go, I didn't go too far astray from that, you know. It was only like a handful of, of snakes that I did that with, so. We yeah. did the exact opposite. We spent the first like five years buying stuff that we shouldn't have bought. <laughs> like, yeah, we definitely. Uh, that, and that's what we have. I have, you know, we have videos about what we would have done differently. But um, for us, uh, I what I what I would have liked to have done differently is I would have researched the market different. Like I just didn't know what I was getting into. Ryan was the the animal guy. I was the business guy, and I just I had no idea what I was getting into. So and going, I should, and I should have been telling him that. But like when you're spending somebody else's money, like he's wanting to invest, I'm like I don't really want to tell you what you should buy. He's like, well, I want this, this, this. I'm yeah. like, okay, whatever you want to do, man. Like, all right. Fine. I'm like, Pokemon, I got to catch them all. You know, like, I'm like, I want to breed. So I want to get like an adult, you know, female nor uh, normal. Like, I just want to, I just want to get in there, you know? 
I would I should have bought more recessive in the beginning because <laughs> I didn't. More money on less animals was the key for yeah, sure. Yeah, more money on less animals. That's what I should have done, and I didn't. Yeah, and that's basically that's basically what I'm saying too. You know, I did waste a little bit of money buying some females. I probably I wouldn't have bought right now at this point in my life. You know, but right. I mean, I, I corrected my course pretty quickly, so that's good. But, hey, but you know, like like how I said earlier about the sunset thing, like. I got powerhouse females growing up, so I could take a sunset in any direction I want, pretty much. So yeah, that's cool, man. No, that's good. It's a good deal. All right, so why don't we uh, take a little tour of your facility, and um, we're gonna roll that right now. All right. What's up, everyone? Man, I'm so excited to be on R&B. Man, Ryan and Ben have been a big inspiration to me since the beginning. So uh, they asked me to do it virtual tour so here's my piece and uh, let's look at some of the snakes that got me into the hobby uh, what fueled my addiction and some of the ones I'm proud to show off that I've collected along the way so uh, let's do this okay this is the snake that brought me back into the hobby this is Candace she's deep in shed right now this is my genetic stripe I've always wanted a genetic stripe from way back when they were super expensive. So uh, this was the first snake I got back in April of last year. And that's what brought me back into the hobby. I love this girl. She will never leave small town exotics. This is a soul sucker. That's possible yellow belly or specter. And I just love this snake. The soul suckers are a great combination. I mean, who couldn't like this? So, uh, I look forward to putting her into some recessive projects. But again, she's one of the first snakes we got. Okay, this was our first uh, bigger purchase. This is a killer yellow belly, possible Gene X, Pied, and this is a male. We got him from Justin. I love that gray freckle right there. That's really cool. Um, he looks a little dirty from the cocoa substrate, but whatever. So this is when we started taking our hobby to the next level and treating it as a business. This was the boy that kicked it all off. Here's another male that I hardly ever show off. This is a lavender albino het pied that I got from Mutation Creation. And this is one of those snakes that, uh, doesn't break the bank but has a lot of potential you can go in different directions you don't have to just go dream sickle with them I mean you can put this lavender into anything else that you want but he is hat pied so that's an obvious direction okay this is one of my favorite snakes hands down I got this one from always evolving pythons this is an orange dream yellow belly inchy gene X hat pied this is a female, and uh, this girl marks a change of business philosophy that I had. <clears throat> uh, I switched over to collecting powerhouse females for a solid foundation, and uh, this girl is just phenomenal. I mean, of course she's hat pied, that's an obvious direction to take this, and those are good combinations, you know, the ODYB, Inchy, Pieds, you know, and throw Gene X in there, that's a really popular combo but uh how about adding this into clown puzzle sunset take it a different direction you know and she's supposed to go good with sunset and help hold that sunset color so why not throw orange dream and uh gene x yellow belly all into sunset too and here is eleanor she is a leopard lemon blade possible granite clown She's one of the powerhouse females I got for future plans. Something to keep holding back for years and years. I got her from Chris at Dead Mouse. She's just a very crisp, clean snake. I had to have her. And of course, all the snakes I want to show off are in shed. This is Vicky. She's a leopard spot nose heck clown. 
breeder, proven breeder female. And this is another good example of a snake that you can get <clears throat> without having to take out a loan or break the bank, you know? I mean, this is basically a het Batman. She's deep in shed right now, though. This is a Orange Dream Super Blackhead Lesser Possible Yellow Belly. Got her from Hardwired Exotics, Tony Thomas. Her orange doesn't ever really show up on camera too well, but you can kind of see it in through here. But I love the dorsal striping she has. This is just a beautiful snake. Look at the belly. Nice clean white. I love that fork dorsal stripe coming from the back of her head. <clears throat> so again, this is a super blackhead, orange dream, lesser, possible yellow belly. This is a yellow belly. It's a hypo yellow belly het puzzle. She is also in shed, but she's hypo, so she looks that way most of the time anyways. And this is Fred. Fred is a pastel blade red stripe clown. hoping to get him breeding this year. I've been pairing him up, but uh, he isn't locking yet. See the belly on him. What's nice, see he's pastel, but there is no white on his head. But he's a pastel extreme gene pet sunset. You know, and I got him for the sunset project that I have going. But once I seen his extreme gene, he's in shed, of course, too. I mean, he's real bright <clears throat> normally when he's not in shed. And that extreme gene is almost like a desert ghost. Okay, so this is a pastel extreme gene sunset. So she's a visual of that male that I just sh uh, showed you guys. And this girl literally takes her name Ball Python seriously. So I'm hoping to produce some super extremes sunsets with this pair. But this is another example of a powerhouse female that I'll keep for years and years. And you can see She's got like bees on her, which is funny because I got her from Brad Boa and Brock Wagner. That goes for B for Ben for R&B, right? <laughs> All right, but what is a facility tour without seeing the facility? So over here, you see, this is our Freedom Breeder rack. We got the 1040, actually it would be 1140 because it goes 11 high. We got our Cocoa Blocks supply down there. Cocoa Blocks shaker over there. We got the mini split system up there. Keeps it at, you know, between 78 and uh, 82 in here at all times. Over here, we got a TGR rack system. This is a 70s series tubs. See our big bumblebee back there. Over here, this is a home-built rack from Red's Racks. He's a local guy. Uh, pretty nice little rack for the hatchlings and clutches and stuff. And then over here, we got the Sea Serpent Stack. So down here, we have the 16 uh, V18 tub stack. And then right here is the mixed. So this is for all the hog noses. Then we got a Animal Plastics Incubator. And, uh, you know, we got this thing used for less than half of what you'd pay for normal cost. So just another example of shopping around and not try and trying not to break the bank. 
Shane, thank you so much for uh, showing us around. That was a, a really good video. I know that I had to cut things up, and you have Dude, so much more to show. Amazing animals. Man. Amazing animals. Amazing. So, uh, especially for being so young, like you're, you get, you've only been doing this less than a year. You've said so. This is crazy. You came um, in swinging for sure. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so uh, we really appreciate you coming on and taking your time to uh, show us. You know, even though we're all kind of stuck at home. And uh, <laughs> so really appreciate it. Um, we're we're going to put your information in the description below. Uh, you guys got to follow them on or follow him on Instagram and YouTube. He has a YouTube channel. Got to check that out. And uh, you do Facebook as well. Um, so is there anything else? Do you have a, a Snapchat or something that you, you know? No, just, just the three major ones. All right. No premium snap. No premium. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right. So uh, thank you so much. And guys, if you guys like this video, please uh, subscribe and like uh, the thumbs up there. Also hit the notification bell if you uh, want to know when we're posting things. Comment down below if you like this format. I think that we're going to try to do this a little bit more often. You know, try to see who's out there, catch on to some uh, breeders that are, you know, cross the country, across the world. So we're all stuck inside. Might as well do something, right? All right. Well, thank you so much. And uh, we'll be talking soon, I'm sure. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Shane, thank you so much. It was a <laughs> he, like, jumped. <laughs> like, ah! <laughs> uh, <laughs> that'll go into the blooper reel. <laughs> um, all right. This guy's name's Larry. He's real cool. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a smart move. You, so, uh, are you interested in a business partnership here? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Shane, do you have? All right, God, you you can do your catchphrase now. Go ahead. I don't have a catchphrase. <laughs> <laughs> I put you on the spot. <laughs> I just leave out a rock on, you know. Yeah. <laughs> right on, man. <laughs> all right. All right.